so welcome everybody. Today we'd like to talk about Hadoop uh, in a few words. I'm Arek Kosinski, sysadmin in Allegro Group. And I'm Robert Mroczkowski, also sysadmin at Allegro Group. Uh, short uh, list of contents for today. Uh, first we will talk about Hadoop basics. Later we will talk about data gathering, simple processing of data within Hadoop cluster. Later, a few words about getting knowledge from our data mm. and short example how to uh, visualize our data. So, let's start. Okay. Uh, every presentation about Hadoop starts with this big data buzzword, but what hides behind it is just petabytes of structured and unstructured data that is very hard to be analyzed in traditional way. So. Mm, there was analyzed that only 12% data in each company is used again. So uh, what are the sources? What are the reasons that only 12% uh, data is analyzed? Uh, first of all, some kinds of information aren't even gathered in central, central storage system, as for example, applicational logs or system logs. They are just left on devices, and during the log rotate, they are, they are just lost. So in the following, there will be one presentation about log gathering system. And for the completeness, I, I think that you might want to follow this one. But uh, as I said, a lot of data is not gathered. Uh, but how can we uh, gain knowledge from the information that, that we have in our companies? So here is the place where the elephant appears on stage. Uh, Hadoop is just one of the big data solutions. If you want to remember uh, only a few things from this presentation, I think you should stick with the slide and those uh, keywords. So as I said, Hadoop is powerful, is scalable. Uh, in its roots is the MapReduce computing engine. It runs on the commodity hardware and uh, allows you to handle with petabytes of data. Uh, we might think about Hadoop in two levels. First of first of layer is the storage system. And it's called HDFS. HDFS is the primary storage for all operations that are working in uh, uh, Hadoop <coughs> environment. Uh, this is a distributed file system. And you can freely run in on commodity hardware. We are not talking maybe about computers from 1990s, but hardware from last five years will be uh, okay for this uh, type of storage. Uh, next important thing is scalability. It's extremely scalable. Uh, if you lack of space in your Hadoop cluster, you are just adding new nodes, connecting them to the infrastructure, and uh, everything. Uh, and you can freely use this uh, new space. And quite important thing about Hadoop installations, you don't need to write anymore. Uh, just put a bunch of disks into your hardware, connect them directly to operating system, and voila. What with security? Hadoop itself will manage for you replication and data safety. Access control. If you need to control who is reading which files, you need to enable Kerberos <coughs> mode in uh, your infrastructure. Uh, you need a few additional demons for this, but you can gain a really quite, quite good uh, access control for your files to reading, like in POSIX file systems. And the last one point, uh, single point of failure. Since 2.0, there is no single point of failure in Hadoop environment. Uh, a lot, uh, many times in, uh, uh, on web you can see that people are saying that there, there is a spoof, uh, we cannot use this in a uh, production environment. Uh, nowadays, uh, things are looking quite, uh, quite better. Uh, but as uh, Robert mentioned before, a uh, few minutes ago, Hadoop is not only storage, it's also a uh, uh, computing layer. Yeah. And uh, there is Yarn. Yarn is the distributed computing layer. And the power of Hadoop comes from this distribution of, uh, of your computations. The second uh, very important part is that fact that operations are taken in the same place where that data is stored. So you don't need to transfer huge volumes of data from the storage nodes to the computational nodes. But the operations calculations just uh, did in the same, in the same nodes. 
the default computing uh, engine is of course MapReduce. It was based on um, document written by Google, but nowadays we've got Yarn. Yarn just gives you a possibility to run any uh, any application you want uh, in a Hadoop environment, in a Hadoop cluster. For example, you might want to just run a web server and collect and analyze in almost real-time data connected to, to this web server. Uh, just like in Spark streaming is, 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 is made. So uh, Yarn gives you the resource management and gives you the ready containers in which you can just uh, embed your computations. So now uh, we are trying to show you how uh, simple and powerful Hadoop is. So we, we are trying to do as, many, as much as ha of hands-on as we could do during this lecture. So let's squeeze our data to get some juice. Uh, first of all, we've got to gather some data into our cl Hadoop cluster. There is a simple tool that is called Flume. Flume is responsible <coughs> for collecting data from many sources and stream them directly into HDFS. Uh, today we will showing you a lot of examples uh, from Twitter data. So, uh, how to get uh, some, some data from Twitter, from API Twitter that are publicly available. Uh, there's a add-on for, uh, for Flume uh, written by uh, Cloudera. It's a jar that you are putting into your operating system where it comes to some class path. And if you like to use this uh, extension to get data from Twitter, you are configuring uh, Flume in, uh, in this manner. You need a few other lines to, to uh, working with Flume, but it's the most important par uh, part about uh, connecting to uh, Twitter. In this example, you just need to work with five lines. You, you've got to put your own credits to Twitter API and put the keywords that you are interested in, and you are gathering this data directly into your Hadoop cluster. So if we got some data from Twitter, it's time to process them. Uh, first of all, uh, we will try to uh, show you how simple is uh, Hadoop, and especially Hadoop streaming. Hadoop streaming is a uh, additional library that comes with each uh, Hadoop distribution, which allows you to put almost any code, uh, not, a, not necessary in Java, to put any code into your Hadoop cluster and run, uh, run, this, code, uh, run this code as a uh, MapReduce application. So you really don't need to write uh, in, Cav in uh, Java any code. You can write uh, in Python, Per, or Oak even uh, application and put this put your code into MapReduce framework and run this code on your cluster. Uh, so let's take a simple example. Uh, this is a map phase of uh, MapReduce, our MapReduce uh, process. We would like to uh, count per day uh, all uh, occurrences of Hadoop uh, keyword in our tweets. So we are uh, moving uh, across our data set and the important thing is probably this, the last line. The last line, uh, we are printing date and counter for this date for this tweet. So we we are writing date and one for this uh, for this uh, tweet. What next? Uh, if we are talking about map reduce, we've got to also write a reduce phase for this example. <coughs> In reduce, uh, we are just collecting all data that. Uh, that comes from the map phase, and we are counting uh, the ones from by by date. What's the important in this example? Hadoop is uh, Hadoop is doing some some job for you that's rem responsible for sorting keys uh, from the map output. So you don't need to bother in your in your reduce phase to detect that key, a key is changing or not. You are just counting uh, keys. Uh, on your input, and uh, if, K, uh, if key is changing, you are just uh, making another uh, calculations. Uh, this is a reduce phase. Uh, let's see how to run this simple code in, in Hadoop cluster. Yes, and that's all, almost all. Uh, so what we are doing in this example, we are running uh, Hadoop streaming library with the Yarn engine. We are attaching special files to our job. We are specifying which uh, file is responsible for map, which one for reduce. We are selecting, we are specifying input and the output path in the HDFS. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, how output from this job will look like? This is something like this. So we've got date, we've got count of tweets related with Hadoop. Now the last step in uh, uh, in the whole process is to get, get this data to, I don't know, you can write, we've got an example in Python, you can write some graphs or whatever you want with different tools. But of course it's a quite simple example. Let's take a look with something more interesting. Uh, yeah. Now we we would like to uh, get the knowledge from our data. For example, we've got the uh, user history, user behavior on our uh, marketplace uh, company, and we want we would like to offer a new custo a customer a new product he would like to buy. So. Uh, traditionally, you do just ma machine learning to do some recommendation stuff, and it's also possible uh, to do machine learning on Hadoop cluster. There are several ways to do this. One of most popular is Mahout, just Mahout uh, library. Mm. We, wa we would like, we won't be talking about machine learning. We just want to so show you how simple H Hadoop is, uh, and let's start uh, doing machine learning on the Hadoop cluster. We just uh, do the installation up to get install Mahout. Next, we prepared very, very simple example uh, where there are just user IDs on, on the left side and the uh, item ID that this user bought or like. And what, what would we like to do? We'd, we, we, would, we, would, uh, we would like to do some recommendations for those users. So we just put this imp simple example file at our H HDFS, just HDFS, DFS put simple example, and we just run out of the box the uh, Mahout library, because as I said, Mahout gives you the implementation of some uh, machine learning algorithms and do for you all the uh, linear algebra which is under the hood. So every matrix transformations, multiplications, or inversions are, are done by Mahout library. So you just need to uh, define the method you would like to, you would like to do and uh, similarity, oh, sorry and the similarity measure. So after, after these three comments, you just get the recommendations for users. So it was a very simple example. Now let's try to do something more real, um, more real world. We would like to analyze the Wikipedia. As you can see, Wikipedia is just a bunch of articles with uh, links between them. Uh, this is only the first paragraph from the first Wikipedia article specifying what the Wikipedia is about. And you, as you can see here, there is uh, several <laughs> links. And what would, you, what would we like to, to do is to just analyze this graph where vertices are Wikipedia articles and the uh, edges is are links, visualizing links bet between the articles. And we would like to propose new edges for this graph. So how could we do? At the very beginning, we should just uh, count links in the Wikipedia. But fortunately, there is already data set you can just download from the internet. Uh, unfortunately, uh, those data, this day data set uh, as is uh, not valid uh, as an input for the Mahout. So if uh, it would, if it is a simple file on a on a file system, I as a system administrator just run simple oak to pre-process this file. But what about the terabytes of data stored in Hadoop cluster? Well, you could do also the same time, the, the, the same code run on a Hadoop cluster using again the the streaming. And Eric said that. Uh, Mahout is doing for you some sorting between map and reduce phase, and here is the place when you can uh, attach your custom class for the sorting, and for example, pass some additional additional parameters. Uh, I'd like to uh, to sort this line in the numerical order. It's not uh, it's not needed for the correctness of the algorithm, but I wanted to get uh, uh, naturally f uh, naturally sorted numbers. So. Uh, ta -da -dam. After after a while, we get a recommendation for about one one thousand of uh, our articles, and we uh, pick uh, to validate the algorithm. We just pick by random two of them. Uh, what is the very very important? We didn't gather any knowledge a priori about the data. So we just download it from the internet, preprocess in the in the terms of uh, syntax, and do nothing more. So after after all after the computation, we've got the proposition for. A Article uh, with name Academia Valenciana de la Languedoc or something. <laughs> Sorry, uh, it's an article about the orga organization in Valencia which uh, takes care about standard of Valencian language, most of. So it was proposed to be attached to FIFA article, maybe by the Valencia club, 
have two articles about October the 1st. It was calendarium and a lot of things uh, happens in Spain uh, at this at this date. Uh, prehistoric, prehistoric Iberia and what's uh, very interesting because the data set was uh, about three years old now now this link appears so uh, it's quite valid. Another and other articles are about some uh, Spain cities or, or, or uh, parts of the country and also about few articles about languages. So it's quite interesting. Second example was to, uh, the date from some, some, some year before Christ were attached two battles from Second Panic War. So pretty amazing for me. Uh, because we, what, we, what we have done, we just download something, install Mahout and run it on a cluster. It's very easy. Now tweets. Uh, Arek gathered some tweets uh, from Twitter, and we would like to find groups of uh, tags and groups of users. So, <coughs> uh, at the very beginning, our data is not random because we are we were attached to some specific keywords, and we will do analysis into into directions. At the very beginning, we would we would like to analyze uh, tags. Uh, so we've got a tweet. Uh, Again, this tweet isn't a proper input for the Mahout library, so we should uh, get some information from those JSONs format. And again, we do just MapReduce using the streaming library. Uh, as we could see again, we are just processing line by line or input, and then uh, then outputting just the keys and values after the map phase. And after the reduce phase, we would like to get uh, format of key and value where key is the tag and value is all text uh, concatenated together from all tweets uh, that the stack appears in. So, simple map reduce. Uh, again, we are doing just some uh, Hadoop streaming and what's important, uh, because Mahout would like to have a sequence file, sequence file output format, so we just uh, tell Hadoop streaming library just to uh, format output for us in, in, such a, in such a way. Okay, next to do the some to do some analysis using linear algebra, we've got we have to uh, format uh, some vector uh, representation of text. Again, we just run some algorithm from the Mahout library and get uh, this format of our tweets. So we reformat JSONs into vectors of numbers. So it was quite easy. Now. Uh, it's time to begin clusterization. We would like to do it in a mm, very simple way. We just run a Cummins algorithm. We get uh, some input and want to use uh, this measure for a distance between our vectors. And after this simple analysis, we get some, something like this, that if you want to burn fat uh, and lose your weight, just go to the fitness uh, and uh, train Zamba. Very, very. I think interesting, and if you want to just uh, use some open software, you should maybe uh, be interested in Linux and with distributions like Ubuntu or OpenSUSE. Or if you want to buy a leather wallet, you're probably a man. So nice, but it was easy, and it's uh, uh, because tags are already co-attached uh, to same text, to same tweets. So. Uh, let's do something more challengeable, but also challenge accepted. Uh, we do the user 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 face analysis, and after after uh, after after a while, we get again information about OS and information about some games. Uh, that if you want to play a game with your friends, just go to the App Store and download this game. Yeah, it was it was just like that. Uh, what we what we've noticed that our data set wasn't random and uh, results results was uh, shows us that data set was strongly curved, but a lot of information about mobile and um, games for the mobile, uh, but I think that OS OS result is great. Uh, the last thing about about getting knowledge from this uh, Twitter data set, we would like to know what is going on on the Hadoop world. What about the tweets? only about Hadoop, something like this. And after, again, Mahout analysis, we get information that Cloudera wants to do big data in real time, and Hortonworks wants to replace Cloudera by doing researches. So I think that's nice. 
Uh, yes, this is about getting knowledge, but sometimes sometimes we've got to visualize our data in some way. Uh, let's take a short example. Uh, what we've got? We've got tweets in our Hadoop cluster. Uh, we've got them, as uh, Robert showed you before, uh, we've got them in JSON format. And we would like to pre-compute this data and uh, send this uh, send our output from some calculations to an Elasticsearch cluster to uh, get some uh, uh, graphs that are made uh, that that we will we'll take with uh, Kibana. Uh, Kibana will be it's not a subject of uh, this presentation. It would like to uh, hear a little more about Kibana. Next presentation will be Derek will be presenting Kibana and Elasticsearch. But let's take to the point. Uh, as we said before, we've got data in uh, JSON and uh, we've got them in Hadoop cluster. Here is an example of a uh, uh, SQL uh, uh, query in Hive. Hive is uh, uh, one of the tools from the eco Hadoop ecosystem and it's responsible for uh, mapping your data in HDFS to a tables uh, in like uh, tables that we know from uh, databases from MySQL or whatever. So uh, we are using uh, Hive in Hadoop cluster. Um, maybe one more word about Hive. Hive is uh, responsible for translating your SQL code into MapReduce job and send uh, this job directly to uh, Hadoop cluster. So we are putting an additional library that is responsible for uh, parsing JSON files. Um, uh, on this example, we don't see how to use the, this, uh, this jar, but we've got to enable this jar to parse our data in uh, to its table. Uh, we are pre-computing some data for April, and we will, uh, uh, on the next step, we will uh, also pre-compute data for May. And what we'd like to achieve, detect new trends in May that are not available in April. Uh, so we are generating uh, some aggregation for uh, from our tweets. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, we are getting data from April from this year, uh, and we are grouping our data by date, by uh, hashtags, and by language that is connected with this tweet. Uh, quite. Uh, oh, and we are storing our uh, our data in this location in uh, in, H in HDFS. It's quite uh, normal. If you know SQL, uh, it's uh, quite uh, quite normal example. Uh, what's more, uh, as we mentioned before, we would like to pre-compute some data and send them directly to Elasticsearch. So we are enabling another library that is responsible for uh, talking uh, with Elasticsearch uh, cluster. How to how to use this uh, library? Uh, we are just uh, saying to, to our Hive Metastore that we are using a special handler for storing this data. And from this moment, we are not, not bothered about uh, if this data will be uh, well uh, formatted or whatever else. We've got library for doing this. So this is our uh, definition of backend in Elasticsearch. Uh, we are from important things, the, we are uh, saying uh, which index to which index we would like to export our data. So it's also quite uh, quite simple and uh, easily achieved. And now we'd like to feed our Elasticsearch cluster with some data. Uh, you know, probably you know SQL and uh, you see that this example is very, very simple. So we are just inserting data into table with our backend to Elasticsearch uh, cluster, and we are selecting, as we mentioned before, we are getting tweets from uh, April and May. We are comparing which are not available in uh, uh, which are not available in April, and detecting, and we are taking only the new trends from uh, from our tweets. Uh, after running this query, our data are available in Elasticsearch, and uh, with a few simple clicks, we'd like to show how to uh, get some graphs from, uh, from this data. Uh, after about, I don't know, 20 clicks in Kibana, you are able to get dashboards something like this. We see that uh, trends are starting by May, uh, by the 1st of May, so 
uh, we took the right data from our cluster. Uh, and here we've got uh, counts for some totals for tags that uh, were not available in uh, in April. As we can see, Eurovision was quite popular topic in this month. Uh, we've got uh, Zoom uh, uh, icon is here. And if you'd like to see something more about this specific tag, we are just clicking this icon. Uh, you probably you remember that we sent to Elasticsearch also data uh, that, uh, that will show us language uh, which is connected with tweets. And after clicking this, uh, this icon, uh, we are getting uh, the screen only with this little tag. And we know that Eurovision was quite popular in Spain, probably in Spain. And it was quite easy, isn't it? Uh, for today, I think this is all what we'd like to show you. Thank you for your time. Any questions, please?